now that we finally have this drier weather I am not drier but colder weather I'm gonna get out and uh, do some deer hunting this evening I like to go out typically only about two hours before last shooting light which is what uh, I think just before seven is half an hour after sun set which is the end of legal shooting light and the end of practical shooting light so I'll go out about five I guess and get into a tree stand that I've got on one of the new trails that we've cut through the woods back here it goes past some uh, nice oak trees which I don't have a lot in this area but have a couple of really big nicely producing oak trees this year and I've got these trails now with an intersection and then deer and the moose and the odd bear and even had a coyote or wolf the other day anyway they use these trails naturally so this trail that's now cut for me to get access to the back of the property it's become a bit of a highway for the wildlife but this intersection is like the perfect spot to to intercept um, deer and being October 30th today what's happening is I've mostly got does that live on the property funny I mostly have does and doe uh, white-tailed deer and cow moose and then the bull moose and the buck deer come in when it's breeding season so I have a lot of bull moose here in September and, and October especially early October hanging around like right on my property and they're funneling in from all the crown land all the public land that's around here all the beaver ponds that funnel them all over the place the pockets of hardwoods that are that the deer are living in and eating so they'll come in here and seek out the does and the and the uh, cows for breeding this our rut probably peaks so the most does that are in estrus so they're in heat and and ready to breed around say the 10th of november but the weeks week and a half leading up to the peak the bucks are just running around trying to find those does that are in estrus that are in heat so the bucks are now coming into the property so i've seen i've only seen two on my trail cameras so far this year actually or this fall and there was a few uh, using the mineral lick that I put out for them in the spring but I don't know if they're the same bucks or not so anyway I'm counting on more bucks coming in and they'll use that trail because it kind of goes downwind of the doe bedding one of the doe bedding areas so they'll kind of go right past my stand so I've been leaving it alone I've been staying out of that area especially keeping Cali out of there so that we're not leaving our scent so they'll naturally funnel through there so I'm hoping this evening being the first time I go in there in a month that I'll be able to intercept a buck and I'll keep at it all this week and then next week November 7th so a week from today the rifle season comes in for deer and when that happens uh, other hunters come in There's a couple other hunt camps around here that'll hunt to the north of me and then some that are way back in around uh, tall ATV access they're going to be back in there hunting with the uh, rifles for at least a week and the season's two weeks long but usually they just come up for a week but that'll end up pushing the deer kind of on my property too if I don't you know run around spooking it and leaving scent everywhere so I'd rather get a deer now during uh, bow season but then uh, if I don't get one during the rifle then or my wife doesn't get one or Emily if she decides to hunt with us then I'll keep bow hunting right up to the end of our season, December 15th, and uh, hopefully get one at that point. But anyway, this is the peak time to get a good buck. So I'm going to put some effort into it. So today's just an outdoor day. I think instead of working in the cellar, I'm just going to clean up around here, keep getting the wood off the ground, get stuff, anything random put away before the snow comes and stays, or at least, you know, before the snow starts falling. We had flurries this morning, but if it falls covers everything and then melts which it will do probably till the end of November it still saturates everything it's hard to get everything dry so I'm going to try to get all the wood especially picked up and any of the lumber I'm going to use this year all right back at it
four o'clock. But I'm going back to the upper trail, which is about you know, probably a 20 minute walk. And then I'm going to pull one of the cameras that I've got on a trail that they're really not using right now, which is unusual. Every other, well, the rest of the year they do use that trail and the moose use that trail a lot. Everything does, but they're not lately. I've got one buck picture, a short video from that camera in the last month and no other animal. So just going around it for some reason. I'm wondering if it's because of the trail, new trail that we cut. Just wondering if they're using that bypassing the upper trail that they've used for years. So I'm gonna pull that camera and move it actually to my stand location. <coughs> just for interest more than anything because I'm dedicated to hunting that stand whenever the, whenever the uh, wind is right, the conditions are right. And I can get in and out of that stand without leaving a scent trail because uh, it's not that far actually behind the cabin here. I'm just going back and staying downwind, far downwind of that trail and then getting up through the bush into the stand. And it's kind of thick where I'm coming up through. They don't generally go in through there, like travel through that spot, which means they're not going to pick up my scent likely. So it means I can hunt that stand a little bit more often than I would otherwise because because the option well the only other way to hunt these deer is to go way around and back into close to their bedding area which I'll do later but I'm not pushing it this early in the season so I'm kind of just going closer to where the trees are that they're feeding on staying closer to that and then uh, a couple of weeks from now if I haven't shot something then I'll start working my way in and getting back and turning I'm getting more into the morning hunt getting back to where their bedding area is it's just that the wind is uh, it's, it's not as off it's not often that it comes from the direction that allows me to do that in other words I need a south wind which you know some years last year we got a lot of south winds but it's not typical in this area
It was a bit of a chilly sit, but mostly I was shivering because of adrenaline, I think. And then the cold added to it. So I was on that, sitting in that tree stand that I set up by the that intersection of the trail that I mentioned before I went out. And the, uh, I could, you could hear about 60 yards from me at the uh, hottest uh, oak tree that was dropping all the acorns. I could hear it crunching when the wind died down. So I knew there was deer there. But then the, uh, a doe came walking down the trail right towards me. And I didn't want to take the, the camera, so I didn't capture any of this. I got a little bit of the sort of the fight at uh, dark, I think. On my, only on my, uh, my uh, cell phone. But the cell phone video, when I hit it, record, a light came on. And I didn't want to spook the deer because they're coming towards me. But anyway, a doe and uh, I think two, must have been, looked too big to be fawns from this year. So maybe her last year fawns. So anyway, three does came walking down the uh, trail. I said it was an intersection. So it's like this and I'm sitting here and they came down and they're picking away and eating acorns in front of me up to about 15 yards but I could hear other deer and then I heard one running off and I thought that that was probably a buck uh, running from another one so sure enough 15 minutes maybe before end of legal shooting light I hear a grunt and then I these deer go running at each other and they're they hit and they were fighting like crazy like real uh full out uh, battle so I could hear the antlers smashing and breaking branches and everything and just going crazy uh, it was so loud and actually the sound of the antlers together was so deep that sound like it didn't sound like rattling with antlers when you're trying to call them in it's a lot deeper sound actually I'll show you and uh, so I thought it was moose actually and they were kind of like roaring at each other like a really deep guttural grunt but that sounded like a moose to me too. And I could see just through the bushes, like through the thick trees there, I could see the movement and I hear the branches breaking and the fighting. But then I heard a couple of snort wheezes, which that's one sound I can't mimic. So I can't show you or tell you what that sounds like. Um, so that's when I knew it was actually deer. So then deer were scattering everywhere. I guess that scared the does off and maybe there's more than two bucks. I'm assuming probably there is because it's getting close to the rut and these does are hanging around. So, and then I heard uh, like further away from where I first heard them eating, I heard uh, heard one of the bucks go running back there. So I got down quickly, snuck down. Actually, I left my bow in the tree stand. So I didn't want to make any noise lowering it down. So I just snuck down as quietly as I could and backed out. So I'll go back tomorrow, kind of midday and grab my bow and then uh, figure out if there's a maybe a slightly better setup I mean I can get a little bit closer I don't know I mean that was just they might smell me like they're walking around but back in there now they might come across my trail and know that I was in there and and then avoid the area so it's a bit risky I'm not sure what I'm gonna do anyway pretty exciting that was cool lens is all fogged up it's still cold inside so this is what I could do tomorrow go into that same spot it was like that the rattling sound the box makes it was just so much deeper like what's a couple of big bucks really deep sound of the antlers They would almost surely come to that sound if I did that. If I went in there tomorrow morning even, I tried to ride them in. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to eat quickly and 
You're gonna stay here, okay? You stay here while I go out hunting. I'll come back. I will come back and let you out. I'll go for a walk after, okay? Good girl.
Um, rattling antlers like I was talking about yesterday. I guess I'm bringing these not the easiest ones to use, but that's the only separated pair I think I have. Or not pair, it's only two. Uh, well, I have several single sheds, but they're all well, at least that size. I seem to have more rights than lefts. I only have five, I think, in total. Loose sheds now. Anyway, I went up this morning, nice and early. Well, I started walking from here, right at Legal Shooting Lake, which is half an hour before sunrise. With a full moon and the snow on the ground, it was quite bright, actually. As um, soon as I left the cabin, found fox tracks all around here, in the garden, which is typical. They're at least one fox here pretty much every night but then I got probably 100 yards back maybe 50 yards past the green uh, the uh, entrance to the the garden on the far side and there was a wolf track crossing the path and it was a pretty big wolf track I, I guess there's been three wolves hanging around again and now that deer have moved in here and are feeding nearby like 150 yards maybe behind the cabin here those wolves are probably going to stick around and chase and harass those deer until they get one. Um, like I said, once the deer move out to the yard in December, the deer yard's nowhere near here. The wolves follow them typically, and they'll only come loop through here once a month or something. But uh, I'm not comfortable with how close they're getting. I have the three of them on trail camera. I'd put some bones out 
I don't know, 100, 200 yards, maybe that way, uh, back at the end of the summer, and they came and ate it that night. Uh, I was just kind of curious what was out there. Uh, typically, I just have the fishers grabbing all that stuff. But anyway, that cro that track crossed, and then I did a whole loop or kind of around trying to stay stay downwind of the path that the deer are on. Uh, I ended up seeing a uh, Checked my trail camera up on the upper trail where I said there wasn't much activity this year. The second buck of the year uh, came walking out of there at 2 o'clock this morning. He came across here, which is about where the wolf track would have intercepted that that deer track. Anyway, I kind of stayed away and looped around. And then I saw some running tracks and then kind of backtracked on those and there were the uh, smaller wolf track was running. And then there was deer trail tracks going off, so they had been chasing the deer right where I plan on hunting, or right where I was hunting this morning too. Uh, and then that big track, I found that, and the three of them came from back over here, across through there, chased the deer around, and then went out. So hopefully they're not in tonight. Uh, so that was so. And one of them was following the fox track too, and the fox they do kill the foxes. So the fox was probably headed for the. <laughs> for the high country. Um, the only other thing I heard this morning, had an owl fly right over my head, which is cool as I was walking the trail. And then I was up on that upper trail and then I heard a cow moose calling down maybe 75 yards down at the north end of my property, down in the swampy area. So not a lot of uh, activity. Saw, I don't know, maybe half a dozen deer tracks. So they're still around. So I'm going to go in and hopefully have the same luck I had two nights ago where I had all that deer activity and the bucks fighting. And then I've got that other uh, younger buck on camera. I think there was a spike buck actually came in. It was on camera. So there should be three or four bucks and four or five does. So there's, you know, hoping, like I said, that activity, especially with the snow on the ground, is going to be decent we got a west wind so it's not quite as good as the north wind i had this morning but i think i can make it work i think i can uh, keep my scent from blowing onto the trail that they're coming in for the main trail anyway gonna head out kelly doesn't like when i do this because she knows i'm going for a walk when she sees me pick up the bow um so she doesn't like it but she can jump it up up in that chair or more likely just sleep in the breezeway where it's cooler all right, I'll let you know what happens. I'll bring the uh, GoPro and see if I can film some of it. Working in the cellar all day. Well, <laughs> the time I finished hunting this morning and doing a little bit more scouting. It's uh, like 10.30, I think. So I haven't got that much done. It's 4.30 now. A little bit more firewood prep. And some electrical in the basement I put another ran another line to the other end past the freezer to go outside to the outdoor kitchen so that I can plug in a freeze dryer so that uh, took a bit of time but then I also cedar clad the two of the walls and started the ceiling I didn't even bring the camera down there. So, I'm going to bring it down tomorrow just as I'm finishing that section up. Trying to get that cellar done. I need to finish that cellar completely, move on, give you guys a tour of it and see how it's all set up. But I need to get the rest of the, the uh, long-term food stored. Not the rest of the greens and everything. I need to get those below ground. Now that it's starting to freeze, but more so getting all this all these variable temperatures I don't like that it's too much chance of condensation so get it underground what's more stable and then get the freezer get the quarters out of the freezer push those up and uh, get ready hopefully for a deer going into that freezer so I'm putting a little subfloor under the freezer too which is that was a struggle moving it this morning pulling it over Put a strap under the skid that it's sitting on and pulled it away from the wall so I could clad the wall behind the freezer and then I'm uh, 
putting a vapor barrier down on the sand and putting some planks and then sliding the freezer back into place and that'll be it for that for a while or until I fill it again with your fish hopefully this winter. I gotta clean up the electrical it's kind of just all hanging I gotta hook up the last of the circuits and run some DC wiring up to the kitchen for some task lighting like under counter lighting under cabinet lighting and uh, a few other little direct current you know, things like the I think the uh, fans in the basement that I talked about so anyway get that stuff hooked up and then I can finish cladding whatever I am cladding I think just the ceiling in this that section I don't think this section I'm gonna put any ceiling boards on because I just want to access in case I need to do more utility work down there um, so I finish up that wiring cl I clean up the wiring finish the last of the DC wiring and then get that tote hooked up so that I can start filling it with rainwater and using the uh, tap in the sink in the bathroom directly from that tank directly from that tote thousand liters so I can get most of that down there fold filled and I can start using that and then I think that's the basement oh I'm gonna try to get a door built for the bottom of the stairs where you go into that cellar section I do want to close that section in so that sounds like more than a day's work to me probably two days I don't want to overdress and overheat on the way but I also sometimes put most of my clothes on so that I don't walk fast it forces me to slow down and not spook the area, spook the deer by running into one. <laughs> hey, come on in. Get up. Good girl, you have to stand here while I'm gone, okay? You have to stay here while I go. I'm sorry, Kelly. I'm sorry. Nothing. Believe it. Not even didn't hear anything walking around. It got really quiet, so I would have heard it. Would have heard something walking around. Like if there was anything nearby. So I'm guessing the wolves pushed them, pushed them out. So it might take a couple of days to settle back down. So I'm not even sure if I'll uh, go out tomorrow. I might just rest it. Take a couple of days off and then maybe one or two more bow hunts and then I'm into rifle season. I'll probably bow hunt even then. But um yeah, be lots of guys running around. Not lots of guys, but there is hunt camps around here. They don't come onto my property, but be hunting the public land around here. What are you doing? <laughs> without you, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs>